And our scripture lesson for today is found in the fourth chapter of Paul's letter to the Philippians. He writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commending, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. So let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you as we come before you to pause a bit from our lives as we, as we take a bit of time away from the busyness and anxiety of life. And in doing so, may we find ever more your peace and your grace and your love. Bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every heart so that they may be acceptable, O Lord, in your sight. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of our big question theme time. And John and I, first of all, want to thank you for submitting the questions that you've submitted. I think, um, I think we did this for about 10 Sundays and tried to answer, I think, probably close to 20 questions. There was more than that turned in, but some of them were similar, so we, we bunched, kind of bunched them together. So... We've tried to answer those questions. If you have other questions, or maybe we didn't answer them the way that you thought they would be answered, or whatever the case may be, check back with us. We'd be glad. I mean, we're still in conversation about these questions ourselves. But one question that kept creeping in through the time where we were talking questions uh, it, it's almost like big questions kind of came about and then all of a sudden people, it, it, it sort of freed people up to start asking other questions. But there was one question that kept coming about during this time and it was the question, why is there so much anxiety? And it was interesting for me as I, I get to go out into the church world to meetings with pastors and other church leaders. The question has come about, why is there so much anxiety in the church? And I remember one of the pastors mentioning, whenever there's decline, there's always anxiety. Whether it's in the church or whether it's with income or whether, whatever it may be. And one of the folks was talking, even when children decline in your house, they start to go off to college. It, it brings about anxiety. And so, uh, you know, and we talked about it with some of the church, churches, churches de on decline and why is there anxiety? It's, it's become interesting, and I've read a number of articles on this, how colleges and universities have had to take on a whole different, look at a whole different direction of learning because especially in the last 10 years, more students are coming to colleges and university with anxiety than any other time in history. So the universities hopefully are kind of catering around that. Pretty much I stopped watching the news because I found myself at times feeling physically anxious. You know, it just comes so fast, the negativity and, and 
so I, I just stopped watching often, in most cases, the news. Well, as the slide shows, anxiety is taking over our lives. Anxiety has become part of our brains and our DNA and everything that we do focuses on oftentimes anxiety. I had this conversation with a teacher some time ago. It's, we, we were kind of talking about that subject. And I mean, we all know that children want snow days in the winter. They want, they want days off. But this teacher was telling me it's gotten so bad in the schools for the parents that the parents are praying for snow days. Because if a child gets a day off at school, then they get the day off work. And I had mentioned, I'm not sure if you know, one of the superstitions of missing school is for children to go to bed at night with their, um, their pajamas on backwards. Just as kind of this good luck thing. Well, parents are starting to do that. <laughs> There's another term that I just learned. It's called Brooksism. It's where you grind your teeth. Dentists love that. It gives them extra work. And, you know, one dentist in this article I read said, I'm, I'm set for life if anxiety continues. But in our Bible reading today, as you think of all that, Paul gives a very simple word. Relax. And it's, you know, as it's interpreted out, it says, he says, don't be anxious. And the letter that Paul was writing to the Philippians, it was the most personal of all the letters that he wrote. He loved the people in Philippi. And part of it was because he knew many of them personally. I think some of them were his friends. But he loved this church in Philippi. So he writes this letter to them. Do not be anxious. Relax. But he was actually in prison when he was writing th this letter. Now, Amy and I, in our own marriage, <clears throat> in our own home, we... We kind of have this little bullet point word that we use to each other on occasion, sometimes regularly, and it's just the word relax. And it, it kind of like, you know, if she says it to me, it like gets my attention. And, and sometimes in anger management, they, they, they teach you during times of when someone gets upset to find a key word to say to them, to kind of remind them that they're in that zone. And, so, our word is relax. And one of my favorite stories in the Bible is the story that's found in the 10th chapter of Luke of Mary and Martha, where Jesus comes to visit these two sisters, and it says that Martha is distracted by many things, and she's anxious. She's racing back and forth to, to make sure everything was just right for Jesus. Probably a type A personality. But her sister Mary <clears throat> was sitting at the feet of Jesus as Martha is running back and forth around the house. <clears throat> and she's listening to Jesus. I think... All of us know people like that. Maybe it's some of us here where things are <clears throat> moving so fast, whether it's at work or with our families in our home, and, and someone's sitting there relaxing. We kind of judge them for that. But Mary was the one <clears throat> in the midst of all this anxiety that was going on. Mary kind of settles. And Jesus said to her, She's chosen the right portion. Martha, you're worried about many things. Mary has chosen the one right thing. And of course, it was Jesus. 
And I think as, <clears throat> as we come together today, Jesus is calling every one of us by our names because we're worried and anxious about so many things. And Jesus is saying, relax. There's only one thing that's needful. I saw like three times this week as I was doing some stuff on relaxing. The, the movie Rescuers Down Under. I, I've never seen it before. But there's a scene in there. It's a children's movie. And there's a scene where Dr. Crisley is attempting to treat the injured Wilbur in the movie, who has a very serious injury, but, but he's a very reluctant patient. And so the doctor is trying to help Wilbur. And the doctor, first of all, says to him very calmly, Wilbur, just relax. And Wilbur was clearly anxious and upset, so he, he gets a little louder. You know, he's screaming at him, relax, relax. And then Wilbur said, if I was more relaxed, I'd be dead. <laughs> so the question is, <clears throat> where are you at in your life with anxiousness? Or what do you do when you get to that point of an anxiousness? I think every person needs a, a place or a zone to go or to be when, when we get anxious. So the question is, what do you do when you get anxious? How many of you remember the, <clears throat> the blue laws? Okay, few of us. And I remember it growing up. It's actually a law or a number of laws that started being used in 1755 in our country. And the blue laws were also known as Sunday laws, designed to restrict or to ban certain things on Sunday in observance of the Sabbath or the day of rest. <coughs> Some of those laws still exist today. Most of them aren't enforced. I interned in Hickory, North Carolina, and I don't remember it being called the blue laws, but they called them the Sunday laws, where many of the stores were closed. The parks, rather than closing on Sunday, they would close on Saturday so that people could go out in a park on a Sunday and, and learn how to relax. But <clears throat> do you know that God made you to relax? I had a seminary professor who was from India, and he was a social, social work professor. And somehow, he literally could lower his blood pressure. He had some kind of technique. And I don't know if he, if he was pressing on nerves or I'm not even sure how he did it, but mainly on Sundays he would practice this, but he would do it also. I mean, I saw him once at, at the middle of a class. He sat down and you know, he's, he's trying to lower his blood pressure. But God made us to not be anxious. I've talked about in the past when we talk about fear, God didn't make us to be fearful. Or when we get angry, God did not make us to be angry. God did not make us to be anxious. And some weeks ago, we, one of the texts that came up was from the sixth chapter of Matthew where Jesus, it was the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is with his disciples and he's teaching them one thing after another. You're the salt of the earth. And he's teaching them the commandments. He's teaching them how to eat. He's teaching them how to pray. And he goes on and on and on. And, and then he said, do not worry. And actually in this section, there's 10 verses. Five times in it, it says, Jesus says, don't be anxious. Don't worry. 
I'm in your midst. And if you recall back during that time, one of the Hebrew words for worry is interesting. It comes from a word or an English word that comes from a Hebrew word that means to strangle. And it certainly does strangle us emotionally, physically, and spiritually. <clears throat> so the question again is, where do you go and what do you do during your anxious moments? Some of you, if you know me, <clears throat> know that one of the places I go that's where I, I can kind of get in the zone, and hopefully all of you have those places, you know, some call it man caves or she sheds, <laughs> I think as the one commercial says. But, and, and other people have other places. I go to Lakeside and I grew up around that area. So I know it very well. And, and there's some places along there that I go and I mean, it just puts me in the relaxing zone. And this is a picture of the sunset. And it's actually, I, I took it, I was down from the, you can see there's a pier up the ways, but if you go down to the pier, there's sometimes hundreds of people out there just watching the sunset. And the discussion often is, you know, what makes that so calming, so relaxing? And I think it's just God you know, bringing, setting the sun and kind of having it go away just to take all of our anxieties and fear with it. I, I just finished reading this book and I've talked about it in the past. It's called Canoeing the Mountains. <clears throat> and it's a story of Lewis and Clark who were given a commission by the President of the United States to forged their way across the country to find uh, a means of water. So they got on <clears throat> the river from the East Coast and they started traveling. They had a whole team of people. They wanted to go to the West Coast because the president wanted to uh, populate the country along the river or the, or the water sources. And so they were, Lewis and Clark were expert canoeists and outdoorsmen. And so they're forging their way along and they're writing back to the president and sending messages back to him and things were going well and then they had a little change of plans. They ran into the mountains. So they knew how to canoe and they had all these people that they had equipped and they they got to the mountains. And actually this book is written because our ch the church and our world is, is right there at the mountains. We've been doing it the same way for so long and all of a sudden things are different. And Lewis and Clark survived because of two things. One is <clears throat> they learned to ride horses. They had to kind of change directions and they got rid of their canoes. It was actually a, a burden, a weight for them. And so <clears throat> they started riding horses. But the second, in this chapter 11, I'll never forget it. They remained calm in the midst of this. And they looked at it like as a little adventure. Well, think about that in the midst of anxiousness. And so we might say, okay, well, how do we do that? And the Bible is filled with ways of encouraging us to do that. Proverbs, the 12th chapter says, anxiety is a in a person's heart weighs them down. And that's what the children are talking about out there today. They're, your children are going to come home with rocks or stones with what's the anxiety in their lives. Or we could go back to our text for today where Paul says, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer, with thanksgiving, let them be known to God. Ecclesiastics chapter 11 says, remove anxiety from your heart. 
And then there's the words from Lamentations, where the writer is in the midst of the, the prophet Jeremiah as the temple was being destroyed. He said, the love of the Lord never ends. So God's love is with you in the midst of all that. But probably the key to all of this, in order to relax us a bit in the midst of anxiety, let me remind you that Jesus has taken care of our number one struggle and anxiety in our lives. And that is the forgiveness of our sins. Once we sort through the, the onion and, and the once we peel back the onion and sort through the layers, often it comes to the guilt and the struggles that we face in life. And Jesus says, I'm giving my life so you don't have to live with that. The more you get to know Jesus, you know he came to bring good news. You know he brought sight to the blind, free prisoners. But his main reason in coming into this world is to forgive us of our sins. Don't be anxious. Your sins are forgiven.